Welcome to the Unaffiliated Creatives Podcast, a show where independent artists can learn from other independent artists. My name is K.A. Everyday, and each week, I will be speaking with some of the most creative minds in the indie music space, trying to figure out what they have learned while navigating through the music industry without the support of major record labels. This podcast is brought to you by the good people over at King Neppy Studios and powered by Red Weasel Media. Thanks for tuning in to the Unaffiliated Creatives Podcast. I'm your host, K.A. Everyday. This is the Indie Artist Safe Place, so take off your shoes, get comfortable, and stay a while. Do us a favor and please rate the show. And if you have any feedback for us, please email us at unaffiliatedcreatives at gmail.com. Today's episode, I will be interviewing VBK, the rapper who just recently shot a music video for a song titled Ride For You. Featuring two mm-hmm. X Chris, so yeah, I hope everybody's familiar. okay. So I hope everybody's had a chance to get comfortable. So VBK the rapper, what you been up to? Mm, nothing, man. Just working on music, trying to you know stay consistent as my craft. You know, trying to trying to build myself because you know I don't know. I just feel like <clears throat> you know consistency is always the key. You know, so that's that's all I've been doing, working, working on my music, trying to get better at it. You know. Yeah. So you say consistency is the key, huh? Yes, sir. That that's definitely the key. If you're not consistent, you're not gonna make it nowhere. <laughs> Cause you gotta you gotta build that that momentum. You gotta be consistent, you know. Especially as an independent artist. Gotta be. <laughs> I like that. So so I gotta ask, uh so how did you come up with this stage name VBK or can you explain to us exactly what that stands for? Was for my initials. Can I, can I say my name on you? You think I see? <laughs> That's the only problem. But my my, my name is Victor. Okay. And, uh, my last name is you know Burrell. My middle initials is King. So that's how I got it. For sure. <laughs> okay. So uh, I guess I can share this with you because uh, it's kind of funny. So how I came up with my stage name is kind of similar. So my real name is Kirk Allen. So when I first started getting into music, I just wanted to go by K.A. You know, that's just my initials. But when I actually started trying to put out music, for some reason, somebody already was using the the stage name K.A. So I added, yeah, so I just added the word every day on the end to it because my whole thing was, you know, I'm the same person when you meet me, if I'm on stage or I'm just out and about in real life, you know, I don't Mm -hmm. switch into a character when I do the music and then turn into another person. When yeah. I'm not doing the music, so I was just like, "Yo, I'm just gonna call myself Ka every day." So, mm-hmm. yeah. oh, oh, that's dope. I, that's that's dope. That's dope. I actually like that. But you just said you said that name that they got copyrighted though. Is you still using it? Well, well, I don't really know all the, the the things about the copyright or whatever. What I'm saying. So, like when I first, yeah. you know, like when you first when you try to submit music or upload music to these different uh platforms like yeah. Spotify and all that stuff. So yeah. when I first, you know, it asked you to put your name in there. So when I put my name in there, I, I put it mm-hmm. in as just K.A. And when I tried to start, you know, submitting music, I got the notification back saying that there was somebody already using that stage name. So I had to come up with something different. So that's when Dang. I just decided to use K.A. every day. Yeah, but you can, you can also always get copyrights for your name, though. Just remember that. All you gotta do is just find like a little lawyer and all of that. I mean, it does that does take a lot to get the actual copyright for your name. I see what you're saying. You might as well use a different name. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, yeah, okay, yeah, I, right. I got what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> copyrighted to try to protect yourself and make sure nobody exactly. else will grab that name. I get it. Yeah, yeah, right. but see, I got, I got, I got all the copyrights for my name. I recently got it through Discord. You know, they got they gave it to me. Like I don't know why, but I just put my name in. And I submitted it, and, you know, I got verified my channel, and that's how I did it. And I was like, nobody can use my name. When when they use my name, email immediately. I immediately get an email. <laughs> so, yeah, so I got a, I got copyrights now. I didn't at first. People were using my name all the time. I hated that. <laughs> but that's kind of crazy because you kind of got a very unique name. So I would say if somebody was using your stage name, that sounds like some – crazy obsessed fan is like trying to be you or something but they're trying to imitate exactly. or they're trying to act like they're you but they're not you exactly exactly but I, like i said though i got the copyrights now so i'm not worried about none of that anymore 
But then though, yes, <laughs> I had to. I was getting attacked. Well, well look, I guess that's actually a good thing. I guess my music must suck. So nobody was actually trying to impersonate me. So I ain't had nothing to worry about. So the fact that you got people out there trying to act like you, man, that means you're doing something right. I know. Yeah, for sure, for sure, bro. I mean, I appreciate you, man. Much love to you. But like, All yeah, right. for sure. All right, so let me ask you this question. So so what would you say is your biggest pet peeve or what's the thing that gets on your nerves the most? What you mean? Like you know, it don't the... even have to be music related, just in general, like just like just normal life stuff. Like what would you consider to be your biggest pet peeve? People envying. Like people just not like I don't like the fact the way it is, it's just like I wanna like like okay, hold on. What I'm saying is I don't like when people envy is what I'm saying. I don't like when people just try to um uh, like what what's the word for it? Like try to try to like act like they they not who they is, you know what I'm saying? Or just you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I don't, also I don't really like like when people like <clears throat> like just try to act like me. Like they act like they me, but they not me, you know what I'm saying? Like you gotta act like yourself. I don't want I don't want you to act like nobody else. I want you to act like yourself. I want you to put your, you know what I'm saying? Your your artwork into it, not my artwork. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I don't, I don't really like that. <laughs> oh yeah, I hear what you're saying. Again, it kind of goes back to the people that was using your stage name. But I got a homeboy that told me that when people try to be you or do what you do, that's like the biggest form of flattery. So I get it how it can get on like your nerves, it. but obviously that means you're doing something right if people trying to basically be you. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like, I mean, I don't trip about it. I don't like, I'm not going to tell you that, but I just feel like I feel some type of way inside. Like, I don't really like that. You know, I can't rock with you if you're trying to be me. You know what I'm saying? You got to be yourself, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, I, <laughs> like, I feel you on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I yeah, know this so is going, I know this huh? is going to probably sound like a weird question, but this is just kind of, you know, letting people know, you know, a little bit more about you, how you are as a person and your personality and stuff like that. So if you were ice cream, what flavor would you be and why? I was ice cream, chocolate. Chocolate. That's my favorite ice cream, too. I don't know. I just, <laughs> that one might be a hard question, but I think I like chocolate more. <laughs> you, you, so I can't you, really you, So you're a chocolate guy, huh? So, so now that you told me your your favorite ice cream and why, so does that translate into other stuff? Like, are you a big, you know, chocolate candy type person or you just chocolate when it comes to ice cream? I mean, I don't really like candy like that. <laughs> I feel like candy is just, I don't like how it can be getting like stuck to your teeth when it's like that. Like when it's the chocolate, I don't really like that. Gotcha. <laughs> so, so yeah, really chocolate, I don't really do like that. I do like Starburst, Skittles, stuff like that. But chocolate, uh, it's too hard to get out, you know, brushing your teeth all day. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, don't really... yeah I understand that. <laughs> so so yeah. since we're so since we're on the subject of talking about food, if you had to only eat one meal for the rest of your life or just one item of food, what would that be and why? It'd be noodles. It'd be noodles. I could survive off noodles. It's because I've been eating them all, my whole life. You know, that's all we had to eat when I was little. So it was like, yeah. Like so, noodles. so when you say noodles, you're talking about like the oodles like that come in the pack? Nah, we talking about like the bag. Yeah, like you talking about the ones you just put, yeah, you just put in yeah, the, you sure. out the, the, the plastic and you just put it in some boiling water. Yep. Uh, yeah, because the, the cup, the cups really don't like, it don't do for me. The cup don't taste like the bag, you know? So that's why I feel like that. It also helps you too, because it's a suit, you know? <laughs> so yeah. So now that you've told a listener audience that you could live the rest of your life eating oodles and noodles, so which one is your favorite flavor? Because I know you can get them in a lot of different flavors. Chicken. I ain't gonna lie. I don't really do like the pork. I am, I don't even think I ever tried the pork, but I just don't like none of the other flavors. It gotta be chicken or beef. Then my two options. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Chicken, beef, and no pork. Nah, nah, nah. Like the other ones they be having be weird, kinda like I ain't never seen that before. I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, so you don't so you don't get exotic, you don't do the shrimp and all of that other stuff. You just keep it, you just keep it simple. I tried it. I tr like shrimp is good, but that's not something that like I like I, I prefer the chicken over anything, like I said. So yeah, shrimp not really good to me like that. It's good, but I don't um prefer it. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. 
Uh, let me ask you this question. So if you could travel to any place in the world, where would you go? Ooh. And, and you know what's crazy is I wanted to go there, but it's ATL, it's California, it's Los Angeles. I wanted to go there, but it's too wild right now. I want to go there to network because I feel like I could really like put in the work if I'm out there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like, I feel like I could be way, way more focused if I'm... Because California is, like, nothing but people that network out there, you know? People that make money out there. So it's like you kind of got to make money, too, you know? <laughs> if you living out there, yeah, for sure. So so let me get this right. So out of all the places you could go in the world, your your choice would be California? Well, as far as if we're talking about, you, you, like, just going this out yeah for sure for sure for sure i ain't gonna lie because their studios is cool too there's a vibe out there it was a vibe out there but not no more it's kind of okay. like wild now so this is about to be a dual answer because I, I see so basically you're answering the question when it comes to how it can better like your music career and stuff and i get it so you're saying going out cali because you know you got hollywood you got la the whole scene mm. that's where a lot of the you know actors and actresses and music people and stuff they either in New York or they in Cali. I get it. So you saying you would want to go out Cali because you would be on the scene and it would better help your exactly. career. Okay. Exactly. So let me kind of answer another or ask you another question now that we didn't got it out of the way. So All not right. related to music, just if you just wanted to go either on vacation or just go anywhere in the world outside of it helping your music career, where would you want to go? You know, that is a good question, man. I ain't really just thought about that, though. Like, I don't, like, really, like, like, I don't know. I've been, I don't, I don't know, man. I can't even lie to you. Like, right now, like, the, the only place is, was in Miami, Florida. That's where I want to go, too. I'm going to go down there, too. It's kind of just, because I like how it is. It's like, them people cool down there. I like Miami. Okay. Like, I seen, Yeah. So you young, so you got a lot of life ahead of you. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm just going to yeah. challenge you, and I'm not going to say that Miami is not a good answer, but at some point in your life, put this as a bucket list thing. Okay. Try to find a place that you can go that's outside of the United States. Because trust me, when you go outside of the United States, things are a lot different. You know, it can open your mind up and you, you know, would get to experience some different things that you're not going to necessarily get here in the United States. So. Yeah, that's why. Oh, yeah, I gotta get a passport. That's 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 one thing I need to get. So that's probably why I'm not even thinking outside of that because I don't have a passport. So it's like it's really pointless for me to think about that when I don't have the passport. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I hey, ain't never hey. been to ATL or, hey. or or Miami, so I feel like that would be all experience once I yeah. get up there. <laughs> well, you got plenty of time to get a passport, so you don't necessarily have to worry about that right now. And uh, I will say I've been to the ATL. At least three or four different times. And every time I've been, I had a good time. And uh, I'm going to be yeah. honest with you. You know, everybody try to make it seem like ATL is all about the strip club scene and all that. But trust me, there's a lot of things that you can do down there that doesn't even have anything to do with that kind of stuff. It's uh -huh. just the city. It's just a lot of stuff you can do. So yeah. it's kind of hard to go to ATL and, and not have fun. So, yeah, you, yeah. you might definitely want to make sure you, you make it to ATL at least once. Yeah. Yeah, and I also want to, you know, try to better my quality, too, you know, because I know they got way better studios out there, you know. Like, where I'm from, they ain't really got no studios. We got to build our own, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Hey, uh, I, I can tell that you really focus on this music thing, because it's funny how most of the questions that I'm asking you, some kind of way, it's still getting tied back to music. Like, you're like, yeah, man, I can go to ATL, but, oh, man, but the music studios down there, I heard they off the chain. Uh, I know. I'm sorry. No, that's good. <laughs> though. That, 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 I mean, but you being genuine, that just lets me know that you're really serious about your craft and you're just trying mm -hmm. to find ways to get better. I like that. Yeah, for sure, man. That's all I'm really trying to do, trying to improve. That's it. And and try to, like, cut off the people that's trying to, you know, put me down. I feel like that's, that's put me down in ways, too, because I let a lot of people put me down with my music stuff instead of lifting me up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. So yeah. let me ask you, uh, so when did you first become interested in music? I started off, I started when I was like six. I had like a little piano my mama had gave me. I think she bought it for Christmas. And, and, and I think it was like one of the pianos that played like instrumentals and stuff like that. 
So I think it had like a little program of an instrumental and I just hit a button and it played a beat. But when it played a beat, that's when I started like rapping and stuff. And that's how it all came together. So, and then and, and actually I probably could show you the video. It actually went, it, it got kind of got some numbers, some thousand views. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, it's not a lot, but at that time it was, you know, cause I was so young. So yeah, for sure. <laughs> So you so you've been doing this music thing ever since you was like six years old. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. About that time, yeah. Cause earlier I ain't really know enough. Yeah, so yeah, about six. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I guess I can share this with you. So I'm kind of similar. So I mean, my mom didn't get me a, a piano or nothing like that, but when I was around five years old, and I know, you know, with technology, people do it a little different now, but uh, back then people used to sit around and actually listen to like the old school radios. So what I would do is I would listen to songs on the radio and uh -huh. I would sing along with the song. And then it got to a point when I realized that I could sing the exact melody of the song that I was listening to and I can make my voice sound just like the person on the radio. And once mm -hmm. I was able to do that, I guess I was able to kind of tell myself that, man, I might actually be pretty good at this singing thing. So from then on, I just made up my mind that I was going to try to, you know, be a singer. And it just, yeah. something I've been passionate about ever since. Oh, wow. Um, so, so, oh, so you, you don't really, really like make music like that no more? Yeah, I do like, it all. So, so, so to give you a little background about myself. So I'm a, I'm a singer or when I first really was doing the music thing, I really just wanted to be a singer first, but then, it mm -hmm. got to the point where I realized, you know, with the way the industry been going, you kind of got to know how to do more than just one thing. You kind of got to be self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm a singer, songwriter. I'm a music producer. I make my own tracks and stuff. And I mix my own stuff. I master my own stuff. I, I know how to rap. And, you know, I'm doing this podcast thing. So, yeah. I, you know, I, just trying to wear a lot of hats, man. But uh, So, I, you basically, oh, my bad. I'm no, sorry. go ahead, go Continue. ahead. So you basically kind of treat music like a hobby type, like a hobby, like, or you just, or is that like your main, main thing? Cause I, like you said, you do podcasts, you do a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Um, well, I, I guess it's all in what you, what your definition of a hobby is. I mean, it's, it's a passion of mine. And of course, you know, I'm gonna keep doing it cause I'm passionate about it. I mean, if something uh -huh. ever was to come of it, that's cool. But I do have a nine to five job too. I'm not at the point where the music, is making enough money where I don't have to do anything else. If that answers your question, so mm. I'm not a full time music artist. That kind of like me too. Yeah. That's what I was just. That's what I was trying to just say. I was just trying to say like that's kind of like me too. It's kind of like the music stuff. Like I said, I work in nine to five too, but I still do the music stuff. I really get paid more off the music stuff. I really don't have to work no more. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> the checks I'm making for this nine to five, I'm making more off the music. You know, <laughs> I just got to be consistent. If I'm consistent, man. I, it, it ain't nothing. I, I, ain't nothing bad gonna happen, you know? People gonna have to listen because they're gonna be forced to listen because it's consistency, you know? Nobody's gonna, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I don't... Uh, let me ask you this question. So what music artist did you aspire to be when you was growing up? What music artist did I aspire to be? Okay, that's a good question. Um, Tupac, you know, I kind of grew up, you know, listening to him. He was kind of influenced. I like how he rap. I like how he spit. He was a real one. Um, we talking about old people or we talking about like people now? I mean, it don't matter. You know, normally somewhere in your music journey, there's normally somebody that you listen to. Polo G. Or Polo G. Polo G is my favorite artist. Like, I don't know, somebody the way he write and the way he tell his stories and the melodic is just crazy, man. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, Polo G is one of the ones I look up to. Man, you sound like my son, man. I, I thought he was the biggest Polo G fan, but now I guess I done, I done, I done met somebody that's a bigger fan than my son when it comes to Polo G, man. But oh, yeah. that's cool. All right, so to kind of uh, add on to that question, so name me your top five rappers, dead or alive, and you can put them in any order. So you don't have to necessarily rank them from like, you know, this is when I think it's first, second, but just who do you think are your top five rappers? That my top five rappers, okay. So Polo G, we got Future, we got um, who 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 uh ah hold on hold on Lil TJ. We're gonna say Lil TJ and we're gonna say who else? I don't want to forget nobody. Um, 
Ooh. Nah, I ain't going to say him. He was my top five, but nah. Let me see. Tupac. We're going to put him in there. <laughs> okay. So, so your, sure. your top five was definitely kind of went, you know, you had a, a, a good variety of people in your, in your top five. So I guess if I had to give a top five, I would say, and I guess mine is more obvious, but, uh, and I guess I'm showing my age a little bit, but I would say Jay-Z, Jay-Z, Tupac, Nas, Biggie. Yeah. The Biggie is definitely, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I'll put Lil Wayne in the field spot. I, I normally change the field spot just from week to week. I mean, sometimes I put Lil Wayne in there. Sometimes I put Andre 3000. And sometimes I put Jada Kiss. So that's I don't, I ain't gonna lie. I don't know who Jada Kiss is. I ain't never heard of him. I might have to check him out, though. You, <laughs> huh? You just offended everybody that's listening. Are you serious right no, you know, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm you don't sorry. know who... I, Okay, so now I got, I got a, I got a. Put me on. This, this, this podcast it just took a turn. So we about, we no, about no, to have no, a little. No, 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 it's cool. We about to have a history lesson real quick. So you okay. know who, you know who DMX is, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so remember the whole yeah. Rough Rider scene? You yeah. Know, Swiss yeah. East was a producer. Okay, you had DMX. Mm -hmm. So remember, there was a group. It wasn't DMX, but there was a group called the Locks. Uh huh. You don't remember the Locks? Locks, Locks. Mm -hmm. L O X. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, it, was, yeah. it was three dudes in the locks. Mm -hmm. Jada Kiss made up one of the members of the locks, but then at some point, Jada Kiss went off and he had a solo career. Mm -hmm. That's who Jada yeah. Kiss is. Okay, 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 okay. So, okay, let, so let, me, let me see. Uh, he, he probably had a couple of songs. You probably didn't even know who it was. You ever heard his song, We gon' Make It? Uh, we gon' make, 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 oh, yeah, make it. We gon' make it. That was Jada Kiss. Right, right. um, oh, for real? So another one of his songs, and Pharrell did a beat. It was called "Knock Yourself Out." You a mile and mile. You gon' knock yourself out. Dun, 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 dun. You okay. gon' knock it. That was yeah, that yeah. was Jada Kiss song. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. I heard that. Yeah. I ain't know who that was though. My my oh, my, my bad. goodness, man. I hope Jada <laughs> Kiss don't run across this podcast. You gonna be like, yo, it's people out there that don't do. Yeah, nah. but, but I'm gonna. No, you put me on though. You but I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what you really need to look at to really show you how good of a lyricist and how crazy Jadakiss was. So I don't know if you've ever seen any of these verses battles that they be having. Uh -huh. Okay, so that was a versus. This is probably one of the best ones. The Locks did a versus against Dipset, and you probably about to tell me you don't know who Dipset is, but that was you know the Dipset was made up of some rapper named Jim Jones. You had Jewel Santana. Uh -huh. Cameron, you do any of them names ring a bell? No, sir. Okay, I'm, a little, I'm a little older, man. I'm sorry. So basically, the locks they they did a versus against Dipset, and Jada Kiss basically beat Dipset by himself. Really? Even though the locks was made of three guys, and the other two guys, you know, it was Styles P and Sheik Loose. They were the other two guys that made up the group. But there was songs where Jada Kiss came out and was performing by himself. And he basically single-handedly beat the entire Dipset crew. So if you want to oh. look up something, go look up the versus battle, uh, the locks versus Dipset, and, and you're going to be like, oh, matter of fact, I know so, another song. R remember the song, Kazan from New York. Oh, Jada yeah, Kiss was yeah, in yeah, that. Yeah. That was, oh, yeah, that, it was Jada Kiss, Fat Joe, mm -hmm. and Ja Rule, I think, was in that song. Yeah, okay. go back and listen. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm. I, I, you know what? I'm gonna go back through my history, man. I ain't gonna lie. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm I didn't even. Too. I didn't even know the podcast was gonna go this way. But I like. That's why I like doing these, man. That was crazy. <laughs> nah, man. I, Ooh, I learn something new boy, every day. <laughs> All right. Man, I apologize. No, you good, man. You good. So, uh, so you just recently shot a music video for a song titled "Ride for You." I just want you yeah. to walk us through that whole process. What you mean? So like walk us part, through the whole because you know that some people that's listening that's never shot a music video, so they won't even know where to begin to like just walk us through the whole process. Like, how did you find a person to shoot the video? You know, you gotta you gotta pick the location, you gotta think about oh, yeah, yeah. so, which song, like there was other songs that you could have shot a video. So why that song? So just kind of walk us through the whole process of you uh shooting a music video. Okay, so um well it was shot by my homie uh gunner. He kind of like uh, I met him, I met him like like what like a year ago. I at the mall, 
we was, I, I don't know how I seen him. He just had a camera in his hand. And when I when I noticed that, I said, whoa, 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 because I had seen he had shot for my other cousin. But I ain't really know him like that. So I I had, you know, conversated with him. He's also a director. So he just showed me the ropes on how to like kind of like do it. So yeah, for sure. And we shot that and I had got 2K, I called 2K Chris for the feature, because there was no feature on there. And the song, I feel like it could have could be up, you know what I'm saying? And he just when he put that verse on that man, that's what made me just be like, oh, whoa, like I really need to put, you know, invest into a video for real. Cause what, once he put that verse in there, man, it, it, that's how I know it was up. Cause I I wasn't expecting that verse. I was not expecting him to give me that verse. Like I was really expecting the song to go like this, you know. <laughs> so yeah, it did what it did though. I'm not, I ain't gonna lie, I'm blessed for that. Okay. Um. So I'm gonna ask you this question, and I know you probably weren't even thinking I was gonna ask you nothing like this. So, uh, what's the craziest thing that you think you would be willing to do to uh to go viral on social media? The craziest thing. So, so I'm gonna help you out a little bit. So I don't yeah, know okay. if you really know some. So there was a girl a while back that actually licked a toilet to go viral on TikTok. And somebody was videoing her licking the toilet. I, and it actually worked because it went viral. And I know, but it's just kind of like when you do stuff like that, it kind of ruins your image. Like people can't, they're not going to take you serious if you're doing stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So that's why, that's why I probably would never do nothing like that. I just do how I'm doing right now because it's working right now, you know? So, yeah, I don't okay. think I'll do anything to, to try to, you know, put my image down. Uh-uh. It's okay. just not worth it. <laughs> so, so basically what you're telling the audience is you would rather just you know, grow organically versus doing something super stupid to just go viral on TikTok or something like that. Yeah, because all that's going to do is have people talk about you the rest of your life, you know? Somebody's going to always have something to say about that situation. I mean, it's cool, but I just don't want people to look at me that way, you know? I want them to look at me in my way or how I do, you know, things, for sure. I'm not trying to go viral over dumb stuff. I don't feel like that's the need. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So real quick, I got to ask you this question because this is basically what the premise of the show is about. So the show is about okay. independent artists helping other independent artists. So what mistakes, if any, have you made so far in the music game that we could learn from? Not being consistent enough. Not being consistent enough, halfway dropping, just being lazy with it. But now, I don't know. I'm very consistent. That's all you got to do is be consistent and you'll make it. Somebody gonna notice you one day or another, you know? That's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me ask you this question. Uh, is there anything that I should have asked you on this podcast that I didn't ask you for whatever reason? Mm, nah. Nah. Okay. Nah. All right. So before you get out of here, tell the audience where they can find you online. Uh, you can like, you know, give up. us all your, yeah, give us all your tags, you know, your, you know, sure. your names, all the different social media platforms. Yeah. Give it to us. Okay. You can find me on YouTube at VBK The Rapper. You can find me on Instagram at, at, at VBK The Rapper. No space. Um, You can find me on just anywhere. Just type in VBK The Rapper on any search, on any platform you see. seeing. So. <laughs> okay. So as long as they type in VBK The Rapper, they're going to find you. Yep. Yep. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to do this interview today, man. Keep grinding, sure, man. man. And I'm definitely going to keep tuning in, man, so I can see your growth, man, as you keep going along this journey. Man, appreciate you, man. I really appreciate you for the opportunity. All yeah. right, man. Well, you, hey, you have a good day, man, and I'll holler at you. You too, man. All right, now. All right, man. Be safe. All right, now.